are reported the graffiti in the middle of Woodlands Lane, the free Tommy that was actually written in the road. In the middle of the road? In the middle of the road, yeah. Oh, well, that, big letters. That yeah, it's much, it has worn out quite a lot actually, I guess with the well, rain. They've done Tommy on one of the post office or telecom boxes. Yes, we reported that as well. That's quite spectacular. That's a whole trip. Yeah, large and awful, isn't it? Yeah, no? No. <laughs> Well, I'm not surprised. Well, elder relatives. Um, um, yeah, Sharon asked the other day. I, um, she said it's more of a duty than. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know that bit. I know more of a duty, yes. <laughs> I think I'd have to sort of go up and see my mum as well. Oh, my friend, my sister had to get, get it. Um, yeah. yeah. 2.29 this morning. So, the 21st. She was a grandmother of that. Yes. Oh, no. Nice. Six. That's it now. I've had enough. No, <laughs> it's not entirely up. You lucky person. It's not entirely up to you, know it? <laughs> I know, but six just seems a lot. <laughs> well, that would be a success. Yeah. My three easy. girls have got two each. They've each got boy and girl. Right. You get seven, and then Dan wants to go through a couple as well. Mm -hmm. All three of them have one each. That's that's oh, one of them. Oh, that's one of them. Yeah, yeah. 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 how are you, Frank? Yeah. Yeah. One of them's got perhaps you know, yeah. boy, yeah. the young yeah. girl, and the other two have got older girls. Being poor. Yeah. 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 Oh, thank you. Oh. And what's the age range of them all? The oldest will be nine in November, and the youngest is. Oh, <laughs> Do you want to go to the other side? Do you want to go to the other side? Do you want to go to the other side? Do you want to go to the other side? Do you want to go to the other side? Do you want to go to the other side? Do you want Councillors Tom Aditya, Terry Cullum, Brian Hopkinson, and then officers John Rendell and Rachel Cullum. Rachel was coming, but she had to go home because she wasn't feeling very well. Okay, agenda right. okay. uh, three declarations by members under the Local Government Act 1972. No. Number four, announcements by the chair, I don't have any. Number five, to confirm the minutes of the meeting held on the 19th of June 2019 as a correct record. Anybody got any comments on them? No, I'm a composer there. Andrew, seconder, Franklin, okay. all in favour? That's unanimous, thank you. Could you, could you want to show your page, sign the the last page, please?
contain agenda item six and deal with any matters arising from the minutes of the meeting on the 19th of June 2019 not covered elsewhere in the agenda. Provision of mugger equipment facility at the Jubilee Centre. We have that tabled there. Um, this is the extract from the Leisure Youth and Amenities Committee meeting on Monday night where the matter was discussed. So uh, they're going to uh, ask him for more quotes to be obtained as per the designs detailed above and an indication to be sought from grant funders to ascertain the potential level of funding available. Um, there is, uh, Rachel said, there is £5,000. We currently hold £5,000 in nominal code 3022 which was allocated from Strategic Planning 2018. So that could be used to pump prime any grant funding that Graham may be able to find for us. Right. I take this will come back to another committee. Yes, meeting, yeah, this is just an update for you really, so you can mm -hmm. see. Just repeat the budget. The comment we just made a second ago. What? We put £5,000 allocated in nominal code 3022 from Strategic Planning meeting last year. Towards the cost of the new bathroom. Mm -hmm. So this is just basically for noting, yes, is it? Yeah, just so you're aware. Okay, any comments, anybody? No, right, well, it's noted then, thank you. Agenda item seven, <coughs> to do with matters of correspondence between the group in the Scope of Finance Committee. Review of all sites, health and hygiene contract. Right, the all sites, health and hygiene, hygiene contract. Agreement is due to expire in September 2019, so this report is from John Rendell. He's met with three companies to obtain the necessary quotations. So it's a three-year contract, and it gives you the details of the specification in the report. Uh, the three companies are Cathedral Hygiene, PHS Group, and Southwest Hygiene. We currently use PHS, who've provided us with a reasonably solid level of service during the past term. They're the only company who offer the local government package <coughs> where they're able to offer such an efficient cost, hence the difference between them and the other two. All three companies would supply us with a very good service. PHS mm -hmm. have offered us the most cost-effective tender package and I'm sure would continue to offer a good level of service going into the next term. Okay, with that last sentence of, appear to be the officer's recommendation then. And almost so, half yeah. the price of the other two as well. Sorry? Almost half the price of yeah. the other two. Yes, yes. Because absolutely. they've got this, as I say, this special package and actually John went back to both of the other two and just said whether they could sort of yeah. match it or, and they were like, you can't get anywhere near that. I'd like, like to propose that. Yeah, that's yeah, opposed by Lane. Second, please. Second. Thank you. Yeah. All in favour? That's unanimous. Thank you very much. Right, 7.2, request from a Bristol Pickleball Club, installation of Pickleball Courts at the Jubilee Centre. Now this has come before us before. Um, I got a person on this. Yeah, I can do. So uh, in the report, it gives you uh, the background to the, to the item. So we were originally approached in February 2019 which and it came to Finance Committee for discussion and you'd be able to see the, I'm not going to read through it all, but that's the minute and the representatives thank the Plan Council for considering their re request. Um, an update, a new request has been received from Bristol Pickleball Club asking the Town Council to reconsider their original refusal. Um, so obviously we couldn't revisit it for six months, so we're now out of the six months. Um, they said, this is from John, someone called, a gentleman called John Ruston, he said, um, I'm one of the founding members of Bristol Pickleball Club. My colleague Paul Copley wrote to you on the 19th of March concerning the proposal to introduce pickleball at the Jubilee Centre. In this temporary absence, I write to inquire whether you and your council have decided the merit of our proposal, and if so, with what result. I have gone back to the res the Mr. Ruston and explained about the six-month rule, hence why it hasn't been addressed earlier on. 
Uh, as I know, Paul has explained to you in the past, pickleball is one of the fastest growing new sports in the UK and within the Bristol area, in excess of 100 people of all ages now regularly play. Indeed, more would do so if conveniently located courts could be made available at suitable times and in this connection, you and your fellow councillors could assist the many local residents who wish to expand their playing experience and for some try it out and see what the sport has to offer. The Jubilee Centre courts are outside and thus our playing potential is weather restricted. However, summer provides us with the opportunity which may not last for many more months. For this reason, may I respectfully request that you and your council reach a decision at an early date and advise me how best we may all advance this project. Require further information. Have they offered to put any money towards this? Well, I th to pay the lot? originally they wanted us to pay for the court and mm -hmm. then um, buy all the equipment. But I think in the letter that they sent you in March. Well, not really quite to the wrong person, so. <laughs> <laughs> But they didn't come back and query it. It yeah. says. If the council would undertake the court markings for pickleball, the Pick Bristol Pickleball Club could host games there and bring along club nets. Yeah. So in the longer the term, we individual would hope to centre. achieve funding support from individual councillors or possibly grant funding for nets to be permanently available at the mm, centre. So they have taken our suggestion on board, because you yeah. suggested to them that they apply for um, the netball grant funding. People are happy with this. Yeah, I mean, obviously, ideally, the netball would like it just to be kept for netball, but they do appreciate the fact that yeah. other sports will possibly want to use it. So if you look on the back, it gives you an indication of the size of the pickleball courts and the cost to mark out the pickleball. That's onto the existing hard courts. So it's £500 plus VAT for one court, £400 plus VAT for two courts, £300 plus VAT for each. Or three or more courts. Yeah. And, um, and you're the waiter of this, are you? Are you, uh, are you the officer for this? Together? I am, yes. Okay. Um, in conjunction with John, obviously, because yeah. he's the premises manager. So confirmation has, has been received from Avon Netball Association that they're happy with the proposed pickleball markings on the netball courts, provided they do not obscure the netball markings or a slippery. And obviously, we would make we would make sure that we didn't put down slippery markings. Um, so the recommendation, it's, which is just a suggestion, is that if councillors do give agreement for a hard court to be marked with the pickleball courts, the court furthest away from the Jubilee Centre is utilised, which will ensure that the first two courts remain free of extra markings for use by netball and tennis clubs and organisations. This could then be combined with the possible installation of the new Mooga, because the Mooga is it's the furthest court away that we would look at putting the move on. So that would be the move on that as well. Yeah. Because okay. otherwise, if we, if you, if you decide you do want to do it and we get, we mark out two pickleball courts or something like that, you're going to be paying eight hundred pound now, with the potential that a few months down the line, you might decide to use that third court for the move and then you wasted your money really. Because obviously the markings would have to come off and be changed. So, so realistically, in a way, this needs to sit on hold whilst we decide what we're going to do, if anything, about the Mooga, mm -hmm. and then incorporate it in the new surfaces, etc., of the Mooga rather than go in there and put it in now. Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that, but that's it. if you decide, yeah, you want to put to install a, move, a pickleball court. It would make sense to tie it in with the Mooga. Yeah. So, or do it do it at the same time? Yeah. So that when, because obviously the if you if council do decide to put the Mooga in, the surfaces will have to be all for that third court would have to be removed and the fencing all changed and resurfaced. So. So we'd have to paint it twice. That makes sense. Saying, it'd it? be a waste of money to paint it now and then paint it and again. And more to the point, we're going to have the line marking people on site marking the lines out for the rest yeah. of the river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So presumably this wouldn't be as a standalone fit that we could include this in the line marking. Yeah, yeah, I don't know on that one, but I mean, Graham can just include the cost of pickleball marking in the quotes that he's getting, obviously from whatever it, company. Wouldn't it make sense right? of what you said, Graham, to do it after? It's just I'm just thinking because when we discussed this back in February, 
there seemed to be a lot more like as to why we didn't want to feed. Well, do it. the main reasons was the fact that they wanted us to pay for the pickleball court and pay twelve hundred pounds for all the equipment and storage as well. Mm. And we weren't sure what the netball because I think John had spoken to a couple of the netball teams just generally, and they obviously said, "Well, we don't want any more markings because it will confuse us." But then the pickleball people actually went and spoke to Ava Netball and said and asked them the question, which is like the league as opposed to just the teams, because yeah. that was who we were worried wouldn't like it. And they came back and said, "Well, yeah, okay, yeah." They, they were all right with the idea. So I said to John, get that in writing just so that we have that. But now the pickleball people have come back and said that they're not expecting us to provide the equipment. They will use their equipment because they already meet on Monday at the leisure centre. And, and then they'll apply for grant funding. So it's essentially a quite a lot cheaper. Would it be different coloured markings? I would well? guess so, yeah. Yeah, it's all yeah. Yeah. The old, uh, council minutes, it would be different. Yeah. In terms of the AM meeting, is it the same as netball people because they might clash within a day where they cut? Um, I th no, I think, I think I get the impression that the pickleball people tend to play during the day oh, okay. when it is quieter on the courts. Evenings, I, there's, I don't think there's much evening availability because we have netball and, mm -hmm. um, you know, other... If the movement goes in, will the netball still play on that as well? Yes, they would do on that one. Yeah, so it'd be on the quite third a busy, one. busy place. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I see. Okay. Well, can we give any indication now to the pickleball people that we're in agreement, but we've got to wait to make a decision later, or we just got to note this and carry on? No, I. What, I mean, I would suggest that. I guess the first thing you need to do is to establish whether or not you want to put the pickleball courts over there. And if you do, then you can decide, yes, I would like it to be combined with an Uga. I think it makes more sense to combine it with an Uga and do it all at the same time. Yeah. I think one court's enough, isn't it, really? Yeah. Yeah. I was just thinking that myself, actually, because the prices go down quite a lot. So for 900 pounds, you do all three, but for 500, you do one. But it's three on one court. It's not one on each court you can get them you can get more than one john said when he spoke to the people for the court store who are there a, a line marking and and um tennis and that sort of court um organization or business and they do all our line markings out there they gave an indication that you could fit three pickleball courts on one hard court, you wouldn't need a pickleball court on each. Uh, each. Tennis, I mean, yeah. Because it's because it goes sideways because it's a badminton court, so it's not. Right. Okay. It's much smaller. So okay. when we do the movement, we have three pickleball yeah, courts. Yeah, but if the movement's got walls around it, is the movement got walls around it? And so it will do. Yeah. So when you're playing pickleball, do you have to stand outside the line to? Yeah, but I serve? think um, if you look on the on um, there's there's quite um, a wide area. So on the side, yeah, there'd be enough runoff, there would, because to be able to put it in for tennis and netball, we need a good runoff, they have to have yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Netball, yeah, so I think it'd be fine for the pickleball on that, I don't think that would impact on it. Well, right, then, so what do we want to do? Do you want to suggest we have three on there? I don't think we have one. three on there, the same as the netball markings as well. On, on a Luger? Yeah. Oh, right. I think if we're going to do the Luger... It is a multi-use games area, yeah. that's what it stands for, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you incorporate it right from the word go, then you get your lining colours right. I don't see why not. I can understand why we use the cost here as well. Yeah. If it's already bought to the site, site, yeah. Okay. Yeah, because so you, you pay, as Ben says, you'd be paying £900 for three, but £800 for two. So yeah, you might as well For the three. extra £100, yeah. pounds, you wouldn't make sense to have. I'd, so I'd say three. So it's kind of, I, I would suggest that at the moment we can't proceed with it no, we can't, because yeah. we don't know the situation regarding the MOOCA but we, if the MOOCA proceeds we don't see any reason why we couldn't include the three courts in the MOOCA yeah. well if the MOOCA don't proceed we well, yeah. what, yeah. if we, what if we say yeah, if the MOOCA is voted down then we're just going to vote to approve the installation of three well, if, we, if we vote tonight to approve these three courts 
Or when the mover's there or not, it doesn't matter. Yeah, if the mover gets turned down, you can just then get on and just mark out the pickleball courts on the existing hard court, because there's a hard court there already. Yeah, the only thing about the mover is that is dictating what time or what date these courts get lined. Yeah, but I mean, realistically, they they do say that it is a summer game, pickleball, the outside pickleball, so you've probably only got another month left now. And I would hope that council will come to a decision on the mover by the end of the year, so it would be ready for next spring summer. Okay. okay. So it's just. So yeah. it's well, just a if, suggestion. It, if we're in agreement for that, can we have someone propose? Oh, the three, yeah, Elaine seconded. So. Ben. One minute. So go for. It's go for the three courts proposed by Elaine, seconded by Ben. It makes sense whether to do whether it, the whether mover goes or not. Yeah. Because yeah. um, um, somebody in else. That. Yes, you don't put the time scale on it, but... No, no, but what I mean is yeah. when the council yeah. comes to vote on that new court, if it's voted down, the pickleball courts just go ahead. So, to go for three pickleball courts at a cost of £300 plus VAT per court, uh, to be... On the end, not where the move was not put court, because it's just one court down here, so one court. Yeah, the three can go under one court. One court. Yes, yes. Yeah. with three, yeah. with three. Yeah. They go sideways instead of the full length. Yeah. They're, they're, they're like short so tennis balls. It's another, it's another sport to Bradley Stoke, isn't it? People get involved in hard court. And it's, it's predominantly aimed at retired people as well, isn't it? Because that's what a lot of the They don't have to buy it. They're not asking us to buy maintain equipment either, it's not yeah. better. Yeah. Because even if they come to us for grant funding for equipment, at least then there's an organisation who's looking after the equipment. Yes, it might just come through grant funding, but it's not like overhead and management costs that we've got to pay for in terms of staff. So, I'll read this back once it's done. So it's and Rachel said that there is, um, there's a nominal code 3089, which is, an, um, which is on our unallocated reserves, and so the money could be used from that and then paid back at the at year end to these potential budgets. So if the move does not go ahead, it will be paid. actually have a use for three of these pickleball courts. I would think so, yeah, because I guess only two people can or four people can play at once, so I guess yeah. So the demand would be I there would for three. I would think so for three, yeah. So to go for the three pickleball courts at a cost of three hundred pounds plus VAT per court to be marked on the furthest hard court and to be combined with the proposed MUGA. If the MUGA does not go ahead, the pickleball courts to be marked on the existing furthest yeah, that makes sense. So, yes, yeah. we've got a proposal. Proposed by Elaine and seconded by Ben. That's unanimous. I think for the sake of £400 and getting two additional courts, it's mm -hmm. you might as well just do well, it. So, but if it goes in with a moon glue, it, it might be nothing. Well, yes, it's yeah, small, yeah, just don't yeah. And if you could. Um, I will go email back. the people. Yeah, and I mean, I did. My apologies that I didn't. I will, yes. When they, when they so, go, I'll, um, go, yeah. yeah. I'll um, I did invite them to the meeting tonight. I was a bit sort of vague about whether I would actually come to the meeting. <laughs> okay then, uh, moving on. 7.3 possible installation of recycling bins at the skate park. And you've got a picture of two recycling bins in the park. Right, so this is. Essentially, obviously, with a view to us being more green around the town, so this would be a trial to see whether it works. So we currently have the recycling option on all of our sites in the town, which works well. We've recently added the glass recycling unit to Bailey's Court Activity Centre, which is currently working brilliantly through the summer, where we recycle tons of glass throughout the summer season. Installing recycling units to the skate park may be tricky, finding the appropriate model to accommodate the park's needs. So
So on researching the various types of bin on the market, the two following bins could possibly work in the skate park. So the first one is the Viridol, which is what we have at the moment um, on our sites. Um, and that would be £3.15 per lift fortnightly collections, which would be added to our current agreement. £13.15. Sorry, £13.15 per lift. But the downside of that is, one, it would look very unsightly. Um, we don't well, like think... steel storage containers. <laughs> Um, and John says he doesn't think we could manage this as we do around the sites because no one would be continually on site to control the opening and locking yeah. because the bins are kept locked on all our sites and the leisure systems obviously mm. unlock them to enter the recycling. If we left them open, it would just be carnage, I think. So the other suggestion is that we look at the Glasden bin, which is normal waste on one side and uh, mixed recycling on the other side. It does appear very sturdy. We have watched a video of people trying to destroy it on the Glasgow website and it does look very hardy. It will have a steel liner within the bins so that will cut down on the potential for anyone setting fire to the bins. So the Glaston bins could work if used appropriately, but obviously we'd need servicing by someone weekly and the waste recycled somewhere. But we could, it would be reasonable for Jason, to, when he empties the bins, provided we had clear plastic bins, to go out and obviously empty that and then put that into our site's recycling. So that wouldn't be quite such a problem. Um, obviously, it is an experiment. We don't know whether people would recycle, but well, I think they do, especially, especially kids seem to be very keen yeah. on it, don't they? Because it's their future. Um, the cost for this could come, Rachel has said, could come from the unallocated use reserve if we actually purchase the Glasden bin, um, because it would be an asset. So that would be nominal code three zero seven nine or three zero eighty, um, and if you decided to go for the Viridor option, it would come from the youth core budget, which is nominal code 5500. So this cluster is a one-off 731? Yes. So in retrospect, I would probably say that would be better because by the time you've added up over the year, the, uh, the Viridor... Well, I think realistically, the Viridor one, it, it's just not working. No. We just couldn't. And with the... With that, I know, yeah, they do put separate. Do you know, well, I'm happy to propose the glass. Do you yeah. have a litter problem? Uh, yeah. not, a, not a litter problem as such, but the litter bins are always full, and a lot of it is plastic bottles a lot and cardboard stuff, you know. Fans. Yeah, so if we could encourage people to recycle. I think this would be a good experiment. Council. Yes, yeah. definitely. Future, and if it does, places. if it does work, then yeah, we could look at putting them on our sites or whatever. But but the skate park is the ideal place to start, really, because that's where. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering because like um, we have obviously got the generic Bradford State Town Council bins, but there's nothing stopping essentially one of those bins going up there and just being relabeled as a recycle, a general recycling mix bin. And then, and then we just do, you know, we're asking for a But the bins waste. that are up there are well used anyway. So I think if you had one that was just... Because this is just general refuge and then plus recycling. Yeah. I'm just saying there's like an added litter bin that was just a generic litter bin. We labelled it as it's a recycled bin for mixed recycled waste. Well, like, it's, my, it's like the yeah. bottle. My, no, no, you're no, saying no. just one bin. Like, my thought is that if you actually want to... In, encourage people to recycle, it's much better to have a dual bin. So when they go to the bin with their rubbish, for that split second, they might actually think, oh, I could put that in the recycling one, and then put it in that one, rather than just sticking it in the new bin. Yeah, I think because... Ben's got quite a valid point, really, but the bin would have to be green or something, wouldn't it? It would have to stand out. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, I, 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 I don't... I'm just, I'm just saying, because obviously that, in the, the picture probably doesn't do it justice, it just looks like a small bin. No, it's a, it's a large bin. 
it just looks like a fantasy small thing. Mm. I, I would probably say, yeah, we'll go with the glove and see how that goes. Yeah, I, I think we should. But we haven't worked out yeah. the service costs for the other ones that are emptied with recyclables. Yeah, well, the, Jason can just add it to the small uh, recycle. Uh, so we have no service costs essentially. No, yeah, there won't be. No, we'll just, uh, we'll just add it into our own. I think for the cost, it's worth the risk of doing an experiment and just a it's a cock up then we'll do it again. Well, it gets <laughs> trashed within the first week of being there and set fire to and ruined or over the course of six I mean I think you need to obviously give it six months yeah, for yeah. a sort of trial. Mm -hmm. But if it is never full of recyclable stuff, it's only ever full of rubbish, then I think then we, we don't buy anymore. Say, we don't buy anymore. We say mm -hmm. we tried but it didn't so work. Not, we're not gonna remove any of the litter bins no. there, we're just gonna put, put this one in, in addition. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I I I I I I second it. Second Ben. <coughs> favour? That's unanimous, thank you. Right. Then we item eight to do with the following financial matters. Eight point one, two thousand nineteen twenty income against expenditure budget report. Right, you have that in your agenda pack. Thank you, Rachel has. If you want to study it. Yep. And then voice banking. <laughs> we'll test you later. <laughs> so the um, bits that she just has highlighted for me to draw your attention to. So overall the income's achieved 53.9% of the annual budget. Um, comparable with the uh, 50 point, this is on the income side, 50.01 at this time last year. So overall 46.9% of the annual budget income has been achieved across the centres, which is a 7% drop compared to last year's overall figure. Um, the Jubilee Centre is currently underperforming compared to historic levels. This is, this possibly was this possibility was highlighted in the April 2019 finance report. Um, that's mainly because the Wise Owls After School and School Holiday Club have relocated to a school venue. So um, that accounts for that estimated income loss. So her recommendation is that Based on the above figures, it would be prudent to reduce the budget for 2019-20, which will then feed into the five-year board plan, as it's un currently unlikely that another block book will fill the space and support the current budget. A reduction to £56,000 is therefore more realistic, which uh, has been adjusted within the five-year plan as attached. So she recommends a budget change for nominal code 4006 from 66000 to 56000 uh, Brook Way Activity Centre is clearly the current top performer. Uh, the current booking schedule shows additional income in the region of £1,950 is due through the remainder of the financial year from two confirmed block bookers and also £513.78 p is due from other one-off bookings which may or may not proceed. Based on the information and assuming there will be further one-off bookings a £3,000 budget increase to £16,000 per annum would be realistic, would help support the budget job at the Dream Jubilee Centre. This increase will be further supported when the car park expansion proceeds, which will hopefully attract more daytime bookings during the week. The budget increase has been adjusted within the five-year plan. So the recommendation is a budget change of nominal code 4007 from £13,000 to £16,000. Um, Bailey's Court Activity Centre, uh, when considering the current position of taking into account the final 2018-19 year-end income, produced £61,080, which is, so a budget increase is recommended to further support the budget, the Jubilee Centre budget drop, and to be more realistically represent the current projections. Based upon these factors, an increase to 62000 should be achievable, and the budget increase has been adjusted within the five-year plan, five plan. So the recommendation is a budget change from 55,000 to 62,000. That's nominal code 4007. 
Um, on the expenditure, obviously you have all the information in front of you. Um, Rachel would be a bit to highlight is the area for consideration at this time relates to the installation of the community shelter in the village green, which is now complete and cost £8,700, which included the base and the bridged path. The original reserve budget allocated was £15,000, which was nominal code 3070 and 9038. And after the final invoice of £650 has been processed, there will be a remaining surplus of £6,300 for relocation. So the recommendation is that a budget move of £6,300 from nominal code 3070 to the un unallocated or future budget reserve nominal code 3089 and this has been incorporated within the five year board plan. That was quite good on the shelter in the end, Yes, it was, yeah. It's really good too, isn't it? Yeah, and it hasn't been used a lot. And the colours yeah. work really well. What was the money there for that five year foot of it? For that uh, shelter was used as the the like kickstart um, seed money, if you like. We were talking about for the um, the outdoor, the other outdoor equipment we wanted. Yeah, because I don't think there's actually there any money available for that no, one. Is there? So if that that's for the uh, leisure equipment that we're looking at putting on the Jubilee Green. Right, because we've already got earmarked that for the Jubilee Green spend. Like, so if we move that over, it's a pretty unallocated reserve. It's said we wanted that as a budget for itself to fund that, and that's the first bit of money to do that with. Yeah. Yeah, because obviously Graham's going to look for grant funding yes. for that equipment, but again we would have to pump line with some of our that's own the word, money. Pump line. Yeah. That makes sense. I think that's a, I think that's a better use of that instead of putting it in unallocated unallocated reserves. I mean, we anticipate spending that. Because the leisure equipment is for the community as a whole, it's not for young people, it's for adults, mm -hmm. isn't it? So, and possibly older members of the community. Mm -hmm. That is the exercise. I think we should do that and that start that moving in the right direction with it. Mm -hmm. Are you for busy? You haven't said anything yet tonight? No, I'm just listening. No? no. no. Nothing to say? No. Okay. So, Ben, you have made a proposal. Right, there's a proposal there. Got a second there? So, are we just going to do that one, or do you want to do all the budget changes but recommend that the third one, this last one, oh, isn't well. allocated? Is everyone happy with the others? I'm happy with the others, yeah. Yeah, everyone? So, yeah, so we do the lot. It's the fourth so budget change, isn't it? Yeah, so recommend uh, the budget change, the budget amendments as highlighted, except for community shelter. So, so that balance is still in what the allocation for the Jubilee Green Furniture anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Well, but the balance, remaining balance, is already in a nominal code. At the moment, yeah. For it's the furniture. In, yeah, it's still in there. Are you for the shelter? The nominal code is 3070. The thing is with these codes, I know they, they've given us an idea of where all the money is, but if we want to put stuff about it, we can go to the There's no, it's not like written in stone. No, it's there, it's no definitely stone. not. Okay, so except for the community shelter surplus, uh, so... £6,300 and that's nominal code 3070 so wish this to be, I guess it will be a new code allocated to a new Well actually the way the code is labelled it's Jubilee Green Development Ok then, so it what says code is that? 3070 Oh, so it can stay where it is. Then. So ten of them can stay where it is, <laughs> and it's just it's then in that in that Jubilee okay, Green development. It's just noted in the comment section that the six, what is okay, it, six thousand three hundred is only you know is there to um, pump prime the okay. development of. So this wish this development. to remain in this code and to be allocated. To pump prime to 
towards the cost of measuring that number. Because when we grant funded the skate park, we need to pump around for that. Didn't yes, we? Jubilee Green. So the budget amendments has highlighted except the community self community shelter surplus, which is six thousand three hundred pounds, nominal code three zero seven zero. We wish this to remain in this code and to be allocated towards the cost of leisure equipment on yeah. the Jubilee Green. Um, so essentially, pump priming any external grant funding. Does that sound reasonable? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that was proposed by Ben and seconded by Andy. Anyone in favour? Yeah, no, no, it's not good. Yeah. Okay, uh, agenda item 8.2, 2019 20, cash statements. You have that in your agenda pack. Refreshments and meetings. <laughs> that would be look. What's the strange strap? We're not talking about tying people up, are we? Where's that? Yeah. Is it one post or something? Yeah, probably. <laughs> or, yeah. <laughs> strange strap. Strange strap. And then cement for the post. For the yes, I strap. think it would be to tie the post, mm -hmm. to restrain the post when it had been set in. Let's see if the, um, John got a iPhone protector case, 45 pounds. Where's that? I was just saying, yeah, where's that? What page? Where's that? Yeah. It's on the front. 69096. That seems like quite a lot of money for a protected case. I spent How much are you spending on? More than that. I've got all 15 quid. Not for that, not for that one I've got there, but I have spent more than that. I guess it's like a bouncy one in case it gets dropped. I hope you can throw it against the wall and the phone's back over. But then I guess the replacement cost of the phone's best part of the phone. Yes, yes, there is a lot more. Yeah, it is. He has got a lot of money. Well, I've got spare money if he wants to use it. I've got four phones now. You've got spare ten? Eh? Spare ten? No, it's the Samsung. The this is part of the telephone contract that we have from Renew. Yeah, I've got, I've got four. They're probably useful. Well, oh, any other comments, anyone? No, no, no it looks fine to me. I'm a proposer. I propose. Elaine, seconder. No, I reckon. Okay. I'm Approve the new bookings and finance officer. You have the. Um, you have access to the basic internet. Analysis. Yeah, the, um, the proposal will be the information which is in the um, italics. Mm. She's been an asset, hasn't she? She's oh, yeah. yeah. I, I propose that. I 
just saying I've been sacking that, she's been a real asset to them. So what she should be doing as part of that, because it's all succession planning for Rachel's role, yes, isn't it? Yes, it is, it's definitely. It's all part of what she should be doing. But it was always planned to be a little bit further down the road when she got herself comfortable and she yeah. is now. She, she fits in very well. And um, I think um, Rachel's also well, they are looking at stage training for her as well, and then some form of further finance qualification once she's got her stage. So, yeah. Right, okay, you've got one. Um, Proposal of second, all in favour? Yeah, unanimous again, thank you. Thank you. Approved bills and direct debits for payments. Can you have that table? I've looked at it since Friday. Observation. The um, total print one, the last one in there, Jubilee Centre, three no smoking sign for toilets. That's because Rachel was here well, a, couple of, <laughs> a couple of weeks ago <laughs> and Elaine was the leisure assistant on duty when the fire alarm suddenly went off. Again. Again. And when, um, just before the fire alarm went off, Two young people were seen running from the outside toilets, the disabled you know, oh, yeah. public toilet. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and um, but, so they managed to cancel the fire brigade and it, it wasn't a problem. And uh, when Rachel and Elaine opened the door, they were literally met with a wall of vape smoke. So whether the young people had been purposely trying to set the fire alarm off or whether they had just been smoking or vaping in there. There wasn't actually any smoking uh, sign. Obviously, they'll ignore the no smoking sign anyway. But just, it did. Um, I see it's quite expensive. Were you young? They just plastic to stick on? No, they're they're much harder. They're like a you know a laminated sort of almost sort of this thickness, but you know, mm -hmm. really because if you just have a plastic on stick on strap, then it will just get removed. So they're probably the after that incident we had here for a while ago. Was that all? We saw it all that. <laughs> that was a good one, that offer. Never. No. no. There was a degree of sheepishness there, wasn't there, on that one? Very embarrassing. Yes. <laughs> all round. And actually, it showed that the um, information of how to silence the device was wrong because that was. For an old alarm. For an old alarm, yes, so it has all been updated. But it's one of those things, I guess, that. I just you can keep on talking. Press the enter button. Yeah, there isn't one. Press the enter button. <laughs> press it anyway. There was even a symbol for an enter button. Yeah. It, was got nothing. it was cold as well. It was kind of very cold. cold. That was the beginning of the year, wasn't it? Mm. I thought it was April. It was Easter. But everybody evacuated the building. So. Right. It's because they were doing the echo. Oh, yes, I remember now. They put it on top of the fire alarm. Yeah, the brown is on it, yeah. Right, oh, anybody got any more comments about the package to prove it? Yes. Have you, have you already proposed it, Elaine? Yeah. I'll yes. second it. I'll second it. Boy, Ben, all in favour? I should not have Thank you very much. And lastly, to confirm the date for our next meeting as uh, Wednesday, night October. Oh, just, uh, just remember that is a week earlier than
Instagram.